So, let's move on to Nectar of Devotion. Second part of chapter 19. And we're reading in the uh, section, The Lord's Extraordinary Mercy. Spontaneous attraction to Krishna, which is said to be due to the ordinary, sorry, the extraordinary mercy of the Lord, can be placed under two headings. Remember, there were two causes of this ecstatic love. One was following the uh, regulative principles of uh, Krishna consciousness and austerity and so many rituals and things like that. And the other is just the pure, extraordinary mercy of the Lord. Uh, actually, they're both necessary. So, spontaneous attraction to Krishna, which is said to be due to the extraordinary mercy of the Lord, can be placed under two headings. One is profound veneration for the greatness of the Lord, and the other is one's being automatically attracted to Krishna without any extraneous consideration. In the Narada Pancharatra, it is said that if on account of profound veneration for the greatness of the Supreme Lord, one attains a great affection and steady love for him, one is certainly assured of attaining the four kinds of Vaishnava liberation, namely achieving the same bodily features as the Lord, achieving the same opulence as the Lord, dwelling on the planet where the Lord is residing, and attaining a eternal association with the Lord. The Vaishnava liberation is completely different from the Mayavadi liberation, which is simply a matter of being merged into the effulgence of the Lord. Now, this is what's called a Vaikuntha mood. Huh? When one thinks, oh, God is great, God is infinite, God is unlimited, and I'm just this tiny little spark. When he thinks like that, oh, God, oh. This is called awe, awe and veneration. Veneration is the type of worship. It means based on this feeling of, of awe, like, oh, you're so great, huh? like that. So the people who worship God like that, when they get to the perfect stage, of developing love for him. They go to the Vaikuntha planets. Uh, they get these four kinds of liberation. They uh, uh, achieve an eternal association with the Lord. They uh, manifest a bodily form similar to the Lord with four arms, blue color, and like that. They get similar opulences to the Lord and they live on the same planet with the Lord in the Vaikuntha realm of the spiritual world. And in that realm, the service, all the service there is, is uh, performed according to the rules and regulations of standard bhakti. Uh, in this mood of, of awe and, re and veneration. And continue on. In the Narada Pancharatra, Pure, unalloyed devotional service is explained as being without any motive for personal benefit. And we talked about that a whole bunch of times. We also talked about how impersonal liberation is more or less spiritual suicide because you lose your identity, you lose your uh, spiritual separateness, individuality, and merge into the Brahman. But pure, unalloyed devotional service is without any motive for personal benefit. Huh? Because you're on the Brahma Bhuta platform. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Sochati Na Kankshati. Huh? If you are on this plane of Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am pure consciousness. You have no material desires, no material hankerings, no lamentations, no trouble, no problems whatsoever. 
no need, no, de no desire, no nothing. Uh, this means you do not have any desire for personal benefit. You can only, you can just love, you can just give, you can just do service eternally because if, if there's nothing you want, if everything's perfect, huh, then well, you don't need anything. So you can just give, you can just serve. That's the mood in the spiritual world. If a devotee is continuously in love with Lord Krishna and his mind is always fixed upon him, that devotional attitude will prove to be the only means of attracting the attention of the Lord. In other words, a Vaishnava who is incessantly thinking of the form of Lord Krishna is to be known as a pure Vaishnava. Uh, so in that mood of being pure spirit soul, the devotee is thinking only of serving the Lord. He's not thinking of, ser of anything else. Not s serving his mind, not serving his senses, not serving other people, not serving some abstract cause like a country or a, a political philosophy or a party or any of that nonsense. He's only serving Krishna personally with love. That's pure devotional service. That's what we're talking about in this chapter. We're talking about the, the perfectional stage of pure devotional service. And how does a devotee get that way? What does the character of a person in that state of consciousness look like? Huh? And then huh, what does it mean to be in pure love of God? Prema. Generally, a devotee who has achieved the causeless mercy of the Lord on account of following the strict rules and regulations of devotional service becomes attracted by the supreme greatness of the Lord, by the transcendental beauty of the Lord, and by the spontaneous execution of devotional service. To be more clear, by executing the regulative principles of devotional service, one can fully appreciate the transcendental beauty of the Lord. In any case, such exalted positions are possible only by the extraordinary mercy of the Lord upon the devotee. What can I say about this? Huh? You have to uh, come to this stage where you, you have no more desire for yourself. You only want to love the Lord and serve the Lord with all your heart. Uh, then he becomes interested. He wants to see, what is this devotee doing that's so nice? Huh? See, it, you know, remember the old story of Tom Sawyer painting the fence? You don't know the story? Tom Sawyer, he's a little bit of a rascal. <laughs> His mother says, Tom, you have to paint the fence today. Oh, I wanted to go fishing. No, Tom, you got to paint the fence. So what would a normal person do? He'd go out there, doggone it, I have to paint a fence. And he'd be out there with the brush and just doing a slap dash old, you know, sloppy job. And just trying to, just trying to finish as soon as possible and, and get out of there. But Tom, no, he's more intelligent than that. He puts down his brush and he gets it all ready and he's like whistling and singing and do 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 I'm gonna paint the fence da 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 yeah da da and he starts doing a real nice job and doing everything very beautiful and carefully and you know his big smile on his face and like wow. So then somebody comes along and they say, Hey Tom, what are you doing? I'm painting the fence, man. Wow, this is great, you know. And the guy says, let me try that. <laughs> so pretty soon, he's got his friends painting the fence, and he's off gone fishing. <laughs> you see? You, you have to be intelligent enough how to attract Krishna. You don't, you don't attract Krishna by going, oh, man, I got to do all this service, I got to chant all these mantras, you know, oh, I got to sit here on the floor and my knees hurt. And blah, 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 blah. 
You think Krishna is going to be interested in that? Huh? Krishna is like, oh, well, another, another neophyte, ho oh, hum. <laughs> but if you're like totally into it, huh? And, and you can't, this can't be imitated. You have to really be into it. Huh? That, wow, oh, this shloka is so beautiful. Oh, the meaning of this prayer is just so nice. Oh, geez, this Krishna is just, everything about Krishna is so beautiful. Even the things that are far away from Krishna are beautiful. What about the things that are close to Krishna? They must be really beautiful. And Wow, I want to get some more of this. This is great. Uh, if, if you start thinking like that, then Krishna is going to be like, hmm, very interesting. See? 